And it's time for an impromptu and unexpected blog video. So I actually had someone send me a really interesting question. And uh, so, you know, because someone sent me an interesting question, I figured I'd better do something with it. They asked me if I'm running Windows 8 and I have one touchscreen monitor and one non-touchscreen monitor, what happens if I want to have something like a game running in full screen on my non-touchscreen monitor and I want to be doing something like, say for example, browsing the internet on my, oh whoops, see, <laughs> have it, right? <laughs> Just a sec. On my touchscreen monitor. How does that work? Can I have a full screen application running over here while I'm, you know, browsing the entertainment news about Liam being caught flirting with a mysterious woman or whatever else is going on? So what happened was I set up the touchscreen monitor and I ran into a very strange problem. Check this out, guys. If I take my HDMI cable, do 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 do, and I plug it into my touchscreen monitor, all right, normal things happen. You got your sort of your monitors and your whatnots and your all that good stuff. So watch this though. Oh, okay, that worked. Right, right, right. Okay, I'm about to show you what's what's sort of weird about it. So if I pressed Internet Explorer and it worked, then what happens is I try to Oh, it's working now. Shoot. Funny story, now that I've fixed it, I actually can't replicate the problem because I've fixed it already, but I'm going to explain what happened. So I had my test bench running right here. I added a touchscreen monitor to use as a secondary monitor to test what that, uh, what that Twitter follower had asked me about. Okay, so I plugged in my HDMI connector and I went, okay, cool, now I'm ready to go. So I immediately started using the left monitor as a touchscreen. I went, oh, okay, I'll launch... I'll launch Internet Explorer, and then I went, okay, now I'll close Internet Explorer, but what actually happened was because the BenQ monitor was my primary monitor, my touch inputs here were registering over here. So even though these icons are in the left corner of the BenQ, if I went like this in the corner of the Acer, it would open up this folder right here. So I kind of went, oh, well, this is stupid. So then, by going into Display Options, and uh, here I can show you guys what I'm doing because I've got my fancy dual camera set up here. So by going into display options, I was able to change the Acer to my main display. This immediately fixed the problem because what it did was it made it so that now I could touch on here and it would work. So I was like, oh, okay, now it's all fixed. So no big deal. So I'll just go back and I'll change to the BenQ being my main display, because this is my gaming display. This is my 120 hertz panel. That did not fix the problem. The problem ended up being caused by some weird setting within the control panel. So I'll show you guys where that is. All you got to do is open up your control panel and then search for tablet. Go to tablet PC settings. Then you're going to want to change the monitor. I've actually, you click setup. And then you end up with a little thing that looks like this. Touch the screen to identify it as the touch screen. Done. Now you have the option to go through and do things like calibrating it or whatever else you want to do. This fixed it so permanently that I'm not even able to demo the issue for you. So there you have it. Thank you for checking out this impromptu Linus Tech Tips episode on how to configure a secondary monitor as a touchscreen. This will be most useful for notebook users because they might not have a touchscreen notebook and they might want to add a secondary touchscreen or desktop users who have a primary display that they're already quite pleased with. And I'm sorry for the technical difficulties on my switcher here, but uh, I'll get the hang of this at some point.